Good evening, everyone. Uh, we're just going to give it another minute or two, uh, just in case anyone is signing in a little bit later um, than seven o'clock, and then we'll kick things off with an introduction uh, from Cheryl. Um, just so everyone knows, this is going to be recorded, so if you need to pop off before the presentation ends, or if you want to watch it again, or watch it with friends, um, it will be on our YouTube channel, and we will also be sending an email with the YouTube link um, later on this week. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to put them in the chat box. If you're having any IT issues, if you can't hear anything, um, any questions uh, for Steve, for Cheryl? about the presentation. Um, we'll do a little Q&A at the end if you've got any questions. All right, Cheryl, I think we're probably good to go now. Okay. Welcome to the first South Shore Joint Initiative SSJI Presents webinar for 2023. I'm Cheryl Anderson, Vice President of the South Shore Joint Initiative. Tonight, we're going to hear from Steve Burr about dark skies. Steve lives in South Marysburg and is a member of the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada, Belleville Division. He's a graduate student at the University of Wales, Trinity St. David, working towards a postgraduate diploma in cultural astronomy and astrology. If you have any questions for Steve, as May Megan said, please put them in the chat box and Megan will read them at the end of the presentation. At the end of the presentation, please stay tuned for a special announcement after the webinar. Over to you, Steve. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you for that introduction. I would just like to take a moment and uh, thank the South Shore Joint Initiative for allowing me to present uh, this evening. And uh, to start off with, we'll have a short documentary on, uh, on light pollution. And after that, It'll be followed with my short presentation on dark sky preserves. And if everybody could just hold off the questions until the end of the PowerPoint presentation, uh, that would be most appreciated. Okay, um, can we go ahead with the uh, with the documentary? We are now raising the first generation of children that neither have they seen starlight, but their parents haven't seen it either, so they can't relate the story. Every culture in existence has um, wondered, has, has stories and mythology about the stars. For a hundred thousand years, our ancestors have looked at the night sky and wondered what were the stars and how far away they were. And then just in the last hundred years or so, we've really begun to know these things really, really well. And it's at this point in time that we're erasing the stars from the night sky and from our culture and from our heritage.
What if Galileo grew up never seeing stars in the sky? What if Isaac Newton grew up never seeing stars in the sky? Would they have ever had that spark of interest in the natural world, the natural universe around them that led them to discover you know, things that we think are amazingly important knowledge about the universe? When was the last time you saw a night sky like this? I don't think enough people understand what the um, night sky presents to itself and how it affects and, and what's, what's out there and, and, and how this affects our thinking about the, um, the, uh, the, the planet, our location in the, in, in, in the scheme of things. Um, uh, People are generally not aware. There's, there's, a, there's a, a definitely an increase in awareness, uh, but still the general public uh, needs to be aware of where we are in the place of things. And they get to, to, to question those things by looking up and saying, uh, what is, uh, what is, uh, what is that? Um, and um, uh, they'll, they have questions to ask after that. So the people are not asking questions because they don't know what questions to ask because they can't see anything. A dark, inspirational sky is our universal heritage, and it's being lost at a rapid rate all around the world. How can we find our place in the universe if when we look up, we see nothing. Light pollution is the culprit for our diminished dark sky. Excessive lighting and increased ambient light levels creates an orange glow above our cities. All that bright, poorly directed light adds to the problem. This pollution can adversely affect our health and even lead to sleep disturbance and depression. Millions of children will never see a sky full of stars. The advent of the smartphone, with its myriad apps and its appeal of instant communication, has captured our fascination away from a starry night sky. Today, our lives are monitored, texted, and videoed on these technological miracles to the detriment of our collective well-being. The night sky provides us identity, makes us feel a connection to all things. Think of all the great minds that gazed up at the night sky and were inspired by it. Are we losing the potential for thousands of great minds? Large-scale light pollution is another man-made problem, a product of the Industrial Revolution and has grown for the last 200 years. In 2010, the United Nations stated that for the first time in history, more people live now in urban than in rural areas, and that two-thirds of the Earth's population have never seen a truly natural night sky. Most of those live under a perpetual orange dome. This helps educate some of the people that why they, they need to look up um, and, and see. Uh, because especially the younger generation, um, they need to look up and see. I mean, I know lecturing at some of the public schools in Toronto, uh, some of the kids have never seen stars. In, in public school, I, I uh, lectured at a couple of um, 
public schools in Scarborough and in Mississauga, and they have said to me, uh, well, we can't see any stars, there is no stars, and, and they're absolutely right. So you can't, how can you deprive that uh, from our next generation not to know what, what's up there and, and, and not to bother looking up? We defined light pollution with several terms. Sky glow, glare, light trespass, and light clutter. Sky glow from artificial lights is most often noticed as a glowing dome of light over cities and towns, yet is pervasive throughout the developed world. Glare is a visual sensation caused by excessive and uncontrolled brightness. It can be disabling or simply uncomfortable. And sensitivity to glare can vary widely. Light trespass occurs when spill light is cast where it is not wanted. Light trespass is somewhat subjective because it is difficult to define when, where, and how much light is unwanted. Light clutter refers to excessive groupings of lights. Groupings of lights may generate confusion, distract from obstacles including those that they may be intended to illuminate, and potentially cause accidents. Billions of dollars are spent on wasteful lighting. About 15 million tons of CO2 are emitted each year in order to power residential outdoor lighting in the United States. And about 35% of this light is wasted. The state of the dark skies in southern Ontario? Well, it's gotten a lot worse. Um, certainly has gotten a lot worse um, because of the growth um, along the lakeshore um, the growth of cities like um, Kingston, Belleville, uh, Toronto, um, all of these coastal, you know, uh, edge cities have certainly scattered light uh, up into the, uh, into the south and to the southwest, um, and, it, and it's quite extreme. Like most life on Earth, humans adhere to a circadian rhythm, our biological clock, a sleep-wake pattern governed by the day-night cycle. Artificial light at night can disrupt that cycle. Exposure to artificial light at night can harm your health. According to the International Dark Sky Association, research suggests that artificial light at night could negatively affect human health, increasing risks for obesity, depression, sleep disorders, diabetes, breast cancer, and more. Our bodies produce the hormone melatonin, in response to circadian rhythm. Melatonin helps keep us healthy. It has antioxidant properties, induces sleep, boosts the immune system, lowers cholesterol, and helps the functioning of the thyroid, pancreas, ovaries, testes, and adrenal glands. Nighttime exposure to artificial light suppresses melatonin production. For wildlife, artificial light is disrupting important nocturnal ecosystems by changing animal mating behaviors, migration routes, and creating an imbalance between predators and prey. And as for public safety, there is no clear scientific evidence that increased outdoor lighting deters crime. It may make us feel more secure, but has not been shown to provide more safety. A dark sky does not necessarily mean a dark ground. Smart lighting that directs light where it is needed creates a balance between our well-being and starlight. Luckily, there is a solution to this problem, and we can each do our part to make a difference. Light pollution is the main, is the main culprit for not seeing the sky. Well, as I say, um, yeah, um, the city could help by um, putting in the uh, low amber uh, down facing lights. Um, all the street lights could be low amber down facing. Um, and um, that, would, that would definitely help. That would definitely help. On a citywide scale, this is a daunting task, but not impossible. But starting with our everyday lives will lead the way to influencing others and changing the world. Many individuals and cities are starting to take action, and here is what you can do. 
make elected officials aware of the problem and the potential solutions, and ensure that these solutions are given proper consideration by urban planning committees. Enact a light abatement plan locally to protect dark sky areas. Everyone can easily help protect the night by adopting four lighting principles that ensure a safe environment while minimizing the impacts on the night sky, ecosystems, and human health. Intensity, Direction, Period, and Color. Reduce Intensity. Choose lights that produce low keyed and constant lighting with not too excessive light intensity. This will let the eye better adapt to ambient brightness while ensuring necessary visibility and sight security. Adjust direction. Choose lights whose luminous flux is oriented towards the area to be lighted. Control time. Time and length of use of light fixtures must also be considered. Install a timer, a motion detector, or simply always turn off the lights before going to bed. The idea is to use only the lighting that you really need. Limit blue light. Give preference to amber light sources over white ones, which are more harmful to sky glow and health due to their large proportion of blue light. Make the right choices when illuminating our homes and property. Effective use of lighting improves visibility, reduces power consumption, and minimizes our carbon footprint by producing fewer greenhouse gases. The best inkling to, to explore is when you go to look through a, 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 a telescope with the naked eye and actually see real time uh, the, the object that you're looking at. You might be looking at a galaxy, you might be looking at the Andromeda galaxy, and you're going to say, wow, that's, that's real, you know, that's really real. And so, um, you know, the, there's an example there, the Andromeda galaxy. Um, you can't see that, you can't see that even here, but it's visible to the naked eye. You don't need a telescope to see the Andromeda galaxy. That's our closest galaxy. And um, whether you, but, but if you go to a dark sky area, uh, in September, October, and you look up, um, you'll see this fuzzy mass way up there, and you'll say, what is that? And the answer is, well, that, that's our nearest neighboring galaxy. That's the Andromeda galaxy. And people go, oh, wow, wow, how far away is that? Wow, can we see, you know, that's the kind of thing that, you know. Now, again, um, light pollution is the culprit for not allowing that to be seen. Using well-directed, low-wattage lights, which illuminate the ground uniformly, can create a darker sky, allowing us to marvel at the dreamy stars and dancing northern lights. A dark, inspirational sky is our universal heritage. Let's protect it. Good to go, so Steve. Steve, yeah, you can go ahead now. All right.
Is that okay now? Can everybody see that? Yep, you just have to, yeah, click on that and switch it over again. There we go, how's that? Perfect. Well, I'm glad to see it's working. Hey. Well, thank you very much. Okay, so tonight's presentation is about a dark sky designation proposal for the South Shore of Prince Edward County. Uh, the agenda for this evening is, is an introduction, uh, followed by a bit of information on the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada, or RASC as we call it. We'll look into uh, some dark sky designations. We'll look at the current light impact in Prince Edward County. And we'll look at some ge geographic boundaries, uh, some implementation points, uh, community partners and possibilities uh, going forward, and then a summary at the end. Man must rise above the earth to the top of the atmosphere and beyond, for only thus will he fully understand the world in which he lives, Socrates. Introduction, the ancient people utilized the stars and the planets to determine when to plant and harvest their crops. They relied on the interstellar patterns for telling time, navigating featureless lands, planting crops, and farming ideology. For those of us living today, we are for the most part unable to see the night sky at all. We have subsequently lost our connection to the night sky. The Royal Astronomical Society of Canada was founded in 1868 and it's Canada's leading astronomy organization, bringing together over 5,000 amateur educators and professionals and amateurs. In addition to many national services, there are 30 centers which offer local programs across Canada. The RASC vision is to be Canada's premier organization of amateur and professional astronomer, astronomers <laughs> promoting astronomy to all and the RASC mission to enhance understanding of and inspire curiosity about the universe through public outreach, education, and support for astronomical research. Dark Sky Preserve. So what is a dark sky preserve? The dark sky preserves are protected areas that make a special commitment to, to protecting and preserving the night, reducing or eliminating light pollution in all forms. Light pollution is the unwanted, inappropriate, or excessive use of artificial lighting. Now, RASC dark sky designations. There are three designations that the uh, Royal Astronomical Society of Canada uh, imparts on, on sites. It's the Dark Sky Preserve, which is a site which very dark skies with minimal sky glow. And they're generally far from urban centers and less accessible to the astronomers and the public, though they usually do contain public campgrounds. The second type is the Nocturnal Preserve. Now, some dark sky sites are remote with few resources, but in active outreach programs and are designated for protection of night for flora and fauna than for public amenities. I seem to be missing part of my slide here, but urban star park is a third. And these are sites within or close to urban areas that are not considered dark, but provide good access to the public. So there's three designations that the South Shore can look at if, if we have enough interest. Now, one example is the North Frontenac Dark Sky Preserve. The North Frontenac Township has designated a dark sky preserve in 2013 in partnership with the Township of North Frontenac, North Frontenac, excuse me, North Frontenac Economic Development Task Force, and the uh, RASC Kingston Center. It is the first municipality in Canada to achieve dark sky preserve status and covers an area of over 1,100 square kilometers. Where are we right now? Well, right now along the shore shore in South Marysburg, uh, we are bordering on class two and class three. 
So for Point Peter, uh, straight to the uh, bird sanctuary along the edge of the southern coast, it's Bortel Class 2, which is a typical dark sky site. And further north in Marysburg, uh, South Marysburg, it's a Bortel Class 3, which is rural sky. And you can see as we uh, go closer to Picton, we get more uh, urban lighting. Geographic boundaries, uh, I'm just taking this off the South Shore Joint Initiative site. So this displays where uh, most of the protected areas are, and this would be the area we were talking about for a dark sky designation. Implementation. So it'd be three phases in, it, in implementing such a dark sky preserve. First of all is the coordination of community partners in phase one. Second would be outreach and education in phase two and implementation and monitoring in phase three. Application details. Well, there's quite a few details here in the application process. I'm not gonna read them all off, um, but we do have to go through quite a procedure to reach the designation level or status. Now, community partners, I, I'll be corrected here because I'm just guessing at which community partners we'd have, but I would say the South Shore Joint Initiative, uh, Indigenous Communities, Nature Conservatory of Canada, Prince Edward Point Bird Observatory, Quinney Conservation, the municipality, of course, so Prince Edward, and the Ontario Provincial Government with their provincial wildlife area. And at the end, uh, <laughs> please correct me if I've left anybody out. So where would this go? So we could have a South Shore Dark Sky Preserve where heaven and earth converge. I think that would be a nice slogan, logo, slogan, slogan, I guess. Maybe that would be it. To go along with this, uh, we'd have to look at the celestial viewing locations as a, such as the Frontenac Stargazing Pad. It's a public space with amenities, including observation pad, parking, accessible washrooms, and electrical service. They have quite a nice one uh, for those of you that have done up the Frontenac. Summary. As a society, we have lost our connection to the night sky. Light pollution affects plants, animals, and humanity. The South Shore of Prince Edward County is a critical migratory pathway and a home to various plants, amphibians, and reptiles. As such, light abatement should be embedded in its management. The way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. Walt Disney. Now, I just, uh, before we get to the end of the presentation, I just wanna draw everybody's attention to the total solar eclipse of April 8th, 2024. As you can see by the map outlined in front of you there, uh, the South Shore Prince Edward County is very close to the central line of the total eclipse. So if there is good weather come April, and that's always iffy, um, we could see an influx of quite a few people coming in from Toronto and Ottawa to get a glimpse, get a glimpse of the eclipse. So that's just a heads up for, for a year this April. Now, if you're interested in astronomy, I got to put this plug in for our astronomy club. Uh, come and join the Belleville Center and uh, our heat meetings are held at the Pioneer Building of Loyalist College, 7.30 p.m. on the first Friday of every month. So if you're interested in astronomy, please come out and join us. Any questions now? Now would be a good time for questions. And for any hate mail, uh, there's my email address. And uh, if anybody wants to get in touch with me, they're quite welcome. Okay, questions. Okay, um, so if you don't want to put it in the chat, I see some people have already raised their hands. So I'm just going to unmute them so that they can speak their question. Yeah, I can't see any chat right here. For... It's okay, I've got it. <laughs> All right, JC. Yeah, hi, thank you very much, Steve. Um, I couldn't put my question in the chat. It says chat disabled when I tried. Um, I guess my question is about 
individual land uh, owners and um, major um, installations like trailer parks and the like. I mean, you didn't have them listed in your um, partners, so to speak. And I guess that's because the definition of partners are people who are working toward the idea of the reserve or preserve. But really, I think one of the biggest issues is how do you bring on board commercial interests and people who have holdings, land holdings in the area? So I don't wonder if you want to comment on that. Sure. Okay. So I, I listed the uh, county of Prince Edward as one of the partners. So we would be looking at municipal bylaws to uh, help assist in the creation of a dark sky preserve in South Marysburg. Sorry, that doesn't address the issue of how you engage individual landowners and commercial interests, which simply are expansionary in terms of how much they wish to develop parts of this part of the world. Okay, so in the phase one of the recommended uh, implementation that I, uh, one of the slides I showed you was education, I believe, and that would be outreach uh, at the local library and advertise the community where members of RASC and the local community would come out and present on light pollution. So does that, uh, and hopefully we uh, address the local land issues for the local landowners through education. Is that, is that, uh, is that helpful? Good luck. I didn't say it was going to be easy. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. Uh, so we were having some trouble with the webinar chat where people couldn't actually chat, but I have enabled it now. So people should be able to put in their questions if they don't wish to speak their question. Maybe I'll give it a minute or two for people to type anything. Come on, people. There's got to be some questions out there. Okay, got one. Are the flashing lights of the wind turbines a bit contributor to, or a big contributor to light pollution? Well, that's a good question. I'm not really a, an expert in light pollution, though I, with regards to the South Shore, however, the, the ones on Wolf Island and uh, Amherst Island, uh, there are they're quite a ways off, so mm -hmm. the impact for the local uh, is very minimal. Okay. Uh, how can individuals become involved in promoting this initiative? Well, that's that's another good question, and that's that's what this meeting is all about tonight. Let's uh, if I get enough interest. And uh, we have enough people that are interested in this project. Uh, maybe we will team up with the So Shore Joint Initiative and uh, see if we can make something happen. My email was uh, is left on the screen there, and uh, if anybody wants to take that down and contact me, that's that's quite okay. As a follow up, that someone else asked, but it kind of bleeds right into it. Uh, what? would you need from SSGI and what are the short-term next steps in order to make this happen? Okay, well, uh, the South Shore Joint Initiative would would be a partner. I, I don't know if we call it a sponsor. Maybe we'd be calling it a sponsor. So maybe within the South Shore Joint Initiative, we could have a dark sky uh, um, grouping that would uh, promote this issue because it really is a, a joint issue with all the various community partners on the South Shore of Prince Edward County. So that's where I would say it, it starts. 
the first step would be. Okay. Um, someone is saying um, that they live in Athol. Uh, what can I do to help uh, dark sky happen here in the South Shore? Well, one thing is you can write your uh, municipal representative uh, about your concerns about the the night sky and light pollution, and uh, maybe we can get a a light abatement in municipal regulations on light abatement for the county, like they do have in the, in the city of Peterborough and uh, and in North Frontenac. So that would be one step: is contacting your local representative and uh, showing interest, uh, sending me an email, say you're interested and in, uh, with the South Shore Joint Initiative and uh, getting a dark sky proposal going. Okay, and another question, RASC um, charges $100, which makes membership prohibitive for some people. Um, can people come to outdoor meetings anyway without getting a membership? Yes, uh, you can show up at uh, one of our monthly meetings. You don't have to be a member. And a lot of our uh, <clears throat> programs are, are open to everyone. For example, in the summertime, well, prior to COVID, we had uh, outreach at Presque Isle, uh Provincial Park for both solar and for evening sky viewing. So yeah, they're open to the public, those events. Do you have a specific place in mind for a dark sky preserve? In okay, so so the South Marysburg uh, would be the location, specifically along the South Shore, where our community partners uh, have authority or responsibility. And uh, so that's the the area. Uh, I don't foresee the uh, whole county as being designated in Dark Sky Preserve, but I'm I'm hoping that we can protect the South Shore area at least. Uh, what are the bylaws implemented in North Frontenac to promote a dark sky? That is another good question, and. Uh, We'd have to research that. I don't have that on the top of my head right, right at the moment. But I know uh, Peterborough has a pretty good uh, uh, rules and regulations with regard to lighting because they've reduced their, uh, their uh, light pollution considerably. Um, not a question, but a comment. Uh, the video was awesome. Very compelling. Well done. <laughs> Well, that was uh, that was more Gary Magwood, uh, and he unfortunately he couldn't make it tonight. He he he's away at the moment, but uh, um, yeah, he wanted to be here, but uh, he couldn't. Uh, another comment: uh, very worthy initiative. Having grown up in an urban setting, I am aware of what I am missing out on. Having visited Prince Edward Point at night, I can personally say the stars are absolutely amazing. Yes, and I, I should comment that uh, all the pictures, except for I think two, are from South Marysburg that are on this uh, on the on my PowerPoint presentation, and all the photos were taken without any uh, light pollution filters or anything on the telescope. Uh, can you tell us more about the twenty twenty four solar eclipse and what we can expect here in the county? Well, it's going to get dark for a few minutes. Um, that's for sure. Um, as long as we have uh, hoping for some nice clear weather come uh, in April. I know it's kind of iffy in April, but uh, it will get dark uh, for probably about three <laughs> minutes. And it'll take uh, several hours to go through the entire process from start to finish. And I think we're, if it is good weather, we're going to see a lot of influx of people from the urban centers come to Prince Edward County, especially to the South Shore, to observe uh, the solar eclipse. I, maybe that's another, uh, later on, uh, maybe in the year, we'll have a, uh, another presentation just on the solar eclipse. How does that sound? Sounds great. 
Um, do you have any ideas for viewing area locations like they have in Frontenac? Like a little platform or anything? Yeah. Any ideal I, locations? Well, any of the uh, uh, location, like that's what I'm open to. So I'm, I just moved to the South Marysburg about three years ago. So um, I trust the people who are part of the South Shore Joint Initiative would probably have some ideas of a possible placement of a sky observing pad. So I, I leave it up to hear input from, from the South Shore Joint Initiative. Uh, will anyone be going door to door speaking with the residents in the South Shore about this? Well, um, I, <laughs> it's a bit, a bit early to, to make a comment on that. Um, I, I would hazard that through, if it ever did get off the ground, we would have education, uh, presentations uh for the residents i don't think uh we'll be knocking door to door but uh you never know it's this is really early and i don't even know if there's any interest in this so i'm gonna leave it at that uh someone suggested why not locate the viewing site to ostrander point road dot 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 say at the moses hudgen log house location which is dark <laughs> Yes, indeed, that it is dark. Uh, however, I, I have a few concerns about the road down to the Hudgens house, um, especially when people will be transporting several thousand dollars worth of optical gear. Um, but uh, definitely, that could be a possible location. Uh, what is the best time of year to experience a dark sky? Whenever it's clear. Uh, yeah, any clear sky. I mean, it's, uh, um, just a couple of days ago, we had a couple of clear nights that were, uh, quite beautiful outside. In fact, I was out myself there taking some photographs. Um, so anytime we have, uh, we're really lucky in South Marysburg. We really have, uh, beautiful dark skies that we can take advantage of. And any evening that's clear, um, I mean, the wintertime, especially it's very crisp and, and uh, the seeing is very good, but anytime. So you can see stars like, say, at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Is there like a best time or just all the time? <laughs> all the I time. I have an early bedtime. <laughs> all the time. Well, that's that's in the fall. Then. If you have if you have a <laughs> early bedtime, the fall, uh, you know, September, uh, yeah, September onward would be good if you have a early bedtime. Um. If we are in the relatively dark areas of Point Peter, will we be able to see the approaching comet over the next couple of weeks? And also, uh, will you be leading anything to see it? We'll, well, definitely, I'm gonna try to have a look at it. Now, the comet will be in the northern, uh, uh, the northern sky. So uh, as long as you have a clear view of the north sky and you can see the Big Dipper, you should be able to, uh, to catch a glimpse of the comet. Now you're probably going to need a really good pair of uh, binoculars or a telescope to see it because it's. Uh, uh, I don't think it's going to be that bright. Okay, I think I have gotten. Oh, one new more. Uh, what camera do you use to optimize dark sky photographs? I have a. Uh, a CMOS camera, a Mellencam CMOS camera, and uh, that I use, and it's specifically designed for use on a telescope. And don't ask me what CMOS stands for, because I forget off the top of my head. Charge something or other. Uh, but it, it, I'd have to look it up. Okay, I think I've reached the end of the questions. I will give it one more minute in case someone has decided to ask one at the last minute. I'm just going to double check to make sure that I've gotten all the questions because they all came at me at once. <laughs> Go 
Going once. Going twice. Going twice. We're not selling anything here, but I guess we're done with the uh, the questions. <laughs> All right. Well, as I say, if anybody's interested in pursuing uh, this project, if they could send me an email at my uh, Gmail address there on the screen. And uh, I hope to hear from the South Shore Joint Initiative, too, to see if they're interested in sponsoring this type of program. Cheryl. Okay, thank you. So, Steve, if you want to stop share, great. Okay, I am amazed. That video is lovely. And you gave us some really great information and a wee bit of a challenge there, didn't you? <laughs> that the South Shore Joint Initiative should uh, uh, start a committee to work with you for a dark sky area on the South Shore. I think it's a good idea. I'd like to thank you very much. I can't promise we're going to do it tomorrow. <laughs> but yeah. but there, there are lots of uh, lots of interested people who have viewed the webinar and will have the opportunity to view it again on YouTube. Everybody will have the opportunity to view it again on YouTube. And let's just say we're going to be in touch. And thank you so very, very much uh, for doing this. Well, thank you uh, for having me. I just, uh, I did promise a special announcement. So here comes the special announcement. The South Shore Joint Initiative has a project, as everybody knows, to restore the heritage designated Hudgen House on Ostrander Point Road in South Marysburg. We are very happy to announce that the house has been accepted into a competition to win $50,000 to help complete its restoration. The next great save competition is run by the National Trust for Canada with support from Eco e Ecclesiastical Insurance, sorry. <laughs> Uh, there are 10 places in Canada in the competition. So the Hudgen House and nine other places are in competition to win $50,000. And you can help us win. The winner will be chosen by public online voting starting Friday, the 20th at 2 p.m. and going to Wednesday, February 22nd at 2 p.m. You can vote every day. For the Hudgen House. Go to www.nationaltrustcanada.ca to vote for the Hudgen House. And all this, of course, information will be on our website. I'm just going to share this. All this information will be on our website. It'll be on our Facebook. There'll be advertisements in the paper. You may have, if you've already read the Times this week, you will have read about it there. And if you cannot find the link, just send me an email or phone me and I'll make sure that you have the link because the only way that we can win $50,000 is that every single person votes for the Hudgen House every day or at least as many days as they can manage. So thank you all for listening to me uh, implore you to vote for the Hudgen House. And thank you all for coming to see Steve talk about a dark sky preserve for South Marysburg. Good evening. Have a good night, everyone. <laughs>